We are now on Lesson 13 of the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. Life Preserver Jesus leading the way from the cross as Mary prays to Him. Lesson 13 is the communion of saints and forgiveness of sins. So what is the communion of saints is in the Apostles' Creed. So what is that all about? I'm glad you asked. The communion of saints is an active union, a sharing of spiritual goods among the members of the mystical body. So we can share our spiritual goods with each other. The word saints in the expression communion of saints means holy ones. We are all made holy by our baptism, although only the saints in heaven have reached perfect holiness. See, I didn't know that. I thought the only way a person could be holy in the Catholic Church is once they, be, once they leave this earth and then they're in heaven. Now they're declared holy. And it does say that. That's when you reach perfect holiness. But it says here that you are made holy by baptism. So I guess you're sort of half holy, which I don't know how that is. As far as holiness, holiness means purity. Uh, you're set apart for God. So you're either, you're either completely set apart or you're completely holy or you're not. I mean, you can't just be, you know, somewhat of a sinner. You know, you're a sinner or you're not a sinner. You know, you've got sin on your life or you don't have it. It's an all or none thing. You don't have a heart that's 40% sin and 60% holiness. But apparently, according to them, that's the way it is. You reach perfect holiness when you're in heaven. But right now, you can be made holy by baptism, but not really perfectly holy. So you're so, just kind of holy, I guess. So with that in mind then, um, so what do you do? You're not perfectly holy, but the ones in heaven are. So the faithful on earth, through the communion of saints, should honor the blessed in heaven and pray to them because they are worthy of honor as friends of God will help the faithful on earth. So because the saints are perfectly holy in heaven, but you're only somewhat holy, the way you, the way you get, I guess, perfectly holy is you pray to them. And it doesn't just say that you just pray to certain saints. It says you honor the blessed in heaven and pray to them. So I guess if your grandmother, say, was a good Catholic and now she's in heaven, you should pray to your grandmother to help you out. And she can help you out while you're on earth. And then you can also relieve the sufferings of the souls in purgatory by prayer, fasting, and other good works by indulgences and by having masses offered for them. Oh, that sounds like hmm, Mormonism. I thought when Martin Luther, that was his big complaint against the Catholics, was the selling of indulgences to help the people in purgatory. And I thought they didn't do that anymore, but apparently they still do it according to this book. You can, you can pray fast and uh, have masses offered for the people in purgatory, and you can also purchase indulgences to help the people in purgatory. Looks well, like the, the Mormons, they get baptized for the dead. You know, you're trying to save a person that's been dead, and you, uh, what is it, they, the, the person that, that's being dunked is representing your dead loved one, and yeah. when they get dunked, then they, uh, then they're saved, but supposedly a spirit is supposed to go to your loved one in hell and say, do you believe in Jesus? Now I do. All right, come on. We'll go get baptized. Oh. Yeah, I guess somehow you were able to help those in purgatory by paying money, by sacrificing, by um, fasting, by prayer. The Blessed Virgin Mary at Fatima asked the children to pray and make sacrifices for sinners. So there you go. Now what's interesting here, and I didn't know this, is according to this book, the people in purgatory are absolutely helpless. My understanding was the way you go to, if you are a really, really evil person, like a Charles Manson, let's say, well then you're gonna go to hell. But if you're just a normal person, but you did a lot of bad things, well then you go to purgatory. And purgatory was a way for you to pay for your sins and you just sort of work your way up to heaven. But according to this chart here that I'm gonna put on here, it says the people in purgatory are helpless. 
So really, they can't do anything. They're suffering there, and the only way they're going to get out of the suffering is by you doing something for them. By your giving money to the Catholic Church on their behalf, by masses offered for them. So you can take the body and blood of Christ for them. You can pray, you can fast, you can do all these other things for them. And then you can get them out of purgatory. They are helpless in purgatory. Here's the chart. I don't know if you can see it. And it shows there that the people in heaven can help us on earth. Us on earth can help each other. And then us on earth can help the people in purgatory. But the people in heaven can't help the people in purgatory. The only people that can help the people in purgatory are the people on earth. So that means you must be a real good Catholic and give a whole bunch of money and uh, pray and fast and sacrifice and do all these things, take mass, do all these things for your loved ones in purgatory because only you can help them and they can't help themselves because they're helpless. There you go. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. Okay. Didn't, didn't you read where it says the people in purgatory have to work? They have to do some kind of work? Or no. No, it says the people in purgatory are helpless. Helpless, all right. They are helpless. They can't, they need us on earth to do something for them. They can't do it themselves. Then, then we're God. Yeah. Yeah, we're the one who does all the good works. Well, they think, Catholics think we're God anyway because we work our way to heaven. So they have us being God anyway. But then, yeah, then we're God for them. We're the mediators for them. Um by we take the place of Jesus on the earth really because yeah. Jesus is the only mediator between God and man according to 1 Timothy 2 5 but that's if you're going to believe that Bible stuff and according to this you can be the mediator between God and man by giving money to the Catholic Church taking masses praying fasting sacrifices doing all these things on behalf of the loved ones in purgatory and then that will get them out of purgatory. Yeah, the people in purgatory, it says, are helpless. They cannot do anything to get out of that. It's up to you to get them out of purgatory. Well, you better hope that your uh, loved ones like you or love you for them to want to do stuff to get you out of hell. Otherwise, you're stuck. Yep. The Blessed Virgin Mary at Fatima asked the children to pray and make sacrifices for sinners. You're not going to go against the Blessed Virgin Mary at Fatima, are you? Although the Our Lady of Fatima really is also a name for an Islamic deity. But um, anyway, you're not going to go against the Blessed Virgin Mary at Fatima and not, and not help out your loved ones in purgatory, are you? Are you? Because they'll stay in purgatory forever if you don't help out. All right, that was lesson 13. It was a doozy.